Hello there, welcome back to Grandad's Shed. So uh, I'm going to start work on this uh, old wolf uh, sapphire power tool. So uh, see the labelling there. It's a, it's a sapphire 9 inch uh, power saw and uh, it's not small. So uh, it's, not, it's a struggle for me to hold out and uh, actually have any control over one hand so it's a, a large large saw by uh, today's standards and the uh, problem with it is the saw blades that I've got with it are a little bit old and have this slightly weird fitting so that it's not a standard hold it's a one and one eighth inch diameter and it has a compression fit I've not been able to source uh, new new blades for this of the correct size, so I do do have a rip saw and uh, a finer 80 tooth blade with it on the original fitting. So some of these saws are now uh, considered vintage. So the saw blades I've got to replace it with are here, randomly selected from tool station. So these cut with centre insert diameter 30 millimetres. So they will fit over the existing spigot there, but they'll be sloppy. Now, they do provide these reduction rings if you have a 16 millimetre machine or a 25 millimetre machine, which again is not that helpful. I did think that I might be able to take one of these rings and file it down to make it, press it in, file it down to make it fit. I'm a little concerned with doing that, that the, um, the shoulder of this is deeper than the saw and the ring, so the ring risks jumping out of the machine. I don't really fancy packing that with washers to keep the, keep the ring in there. So that's something I could have done. The other option is if I can remove the blade from here. Here's my finger. Just to lift out the dry flange. So the dry flange has got keyway and to uh, have some shed time, remake this. So turn that to be a 30 millimeter diameter to directly accept the new saw blade. Yeah. It's close. Take, take the pack off there. I mean, it, it would be close to fit and shim between the two. But given that you can lay in the clamps down the uh, reduction ring might pop out if it bites onto something hard so I don't fancy that happening with a machine this big so, two, two parts of this one will be uh, stripping and maintaining the saw because it's quite old and probably do with a, a grease. So these saws have a reduction gear from the main shaft that's not directly onto the motor. So there is a gearbox in here. Um, and remachine this piece to at least store saw in the original condition. Um, so that's what the next couple of videos will be about. Just setting up to uh, try and recreate this using bar stock. Unfortunately it's aluminium, I couldn't find any uh, any steel so it's it's almost the right diameter so I'm going to chuck it up on the lathe and uh, turn the shoulder on the end here first and then hold through the middle, part it off, turn it around and then in the back machine the 30mm diameter bore for the new type of saw blade 
see how we get on with that. And then try and make sure it fits over the end of the shaft, just like the old one does. That's the goal. Keep me busy for a little while. So I've just been using the deburring tool here and uh, just put a nice chamfer on the three edges. So the piece that goes through the middle there is just the right size. So I'm going to take the original piece, slides on up to the shoulder, no further. There's 0.2mm difference between the bearing face and the journal for this. So it's a nice fit. So I'm going to take it out, pop it in the in the truck the other way around, and machine the blade hold on the back of it. Finishing the shame 
Okay. So it's that the new 30mm sword blades. Here we have the finished part and the new saw. This is our jobs are good. Okay, uh, update now. Back in the shed, so following the visit to the lathe. Um, this is the main drive shaft that comes off the motor. Um, and this is the uh, saw blade flange. So there's a keyway and it sits over the top there. And the keyway presses in and then the saw blade onto that. that. Tight fit. So what we now have is that piece of metal having been recreated. So we can now take our 30 millimeter diameter blade, press that in, and a little bit of finishing work I've got to do is I've got to make the key seat just as it should over the shaft and that will fit on there just like the old one. So that means when we want to change between the saw blades we just have to strip it down far enough to be able to swap this flange. Apart from that the machine stays in an original state. So what I'm going to be doing now is taking this needle file and filing out keyway so that the uh, the keyway is the same on both of these that's just going to be fiddly and time consuming the proper way to have done it was a keyway brooch but I haven't got one of them so I'm going to continue with this and then we'll be able to change between the two sets of blades but that will have to wait until the saw is back together okay so now we uh, finish that fiddling, so we can see from this there's just a little bit of play in the original one. And reasonably snug fit, and this is a flush finish. We take this one that over, we can see that also fits. This is not quite a flush finish. The outer flange to hold the new saw blade is 0.4 millimeters thicker. If it turns out to be a problem, we can uh, polish this down. Uh, but the width there is the same because that clamps on either side of the bearing. So the bearing journal here and the bolt will 
melt it all together. So the compression of the blade presses the uh, drive shaft into the bearing onto the outside edge of the blade. So that component is now ready. It's test day for the new uh, blade adapter. So I've just made a cut along the front here with this saw blade. It was all right. Tried to go along with this one, and it's uh, so blunt on those edges, it was burning its way through the wood. So, what we need to do is go and put one of these on new saw blades. Now, they come with adapter rings, but unfortunately, these blades are D shaped inners, so that's not possible. Now, Let's go and test my newly made 30mm adapter. Should be able to lift out the old one. Drop in my new one. Oh, that's encouraging. And take off the For it. I've decided to go for the finest pitch one. And so. Now, this blade isn't keyed, so I don't know whether it's just going to spin when the source starts or not. It's one of those things I just have to find out. Seems to have about the right offset, which is good. So, let's just go for it. Wow, that produces a lot more dust a lot faster. Uh, something I can see already is the um, space off is just a little bit thicker with this uh, bolt down and uh, it's cut a millimetre shy compared to the original blade that was, was in there. You can actually see that on the, the front fence there. So I might just need to tighten that down. We'll just learn that that's how this tool works. Anyway, that was a that was a nice cut. Anyway, that's how you upgrade these saws to the new metric. Thanks for watching.